Welcome to another edition of Florida Appeals Journal. I'm Jennifer Carroll. And this week's question to you is, what do you do when you want to challenge a public office or you want to challenge a, a sitting incumbent uh, and you believe they really don't have a right uh, to that office for a variety of uh, specific legal reasons or some reason you have to challenge an election? Welcome to the extraordinary writ of Quo Warranto. Quo Warranto, like everything else in the law, it's a Latin term, and it means by what authority. So when you're dealing with Quo Warranto, you're challenging the exercise of some right or privilege, the powers of which are specifically derived from the state, okay, so state authority, and that's what allows you to use this writ. Now, there are a lot of, lot of rules for it, but let me just go through some, some general ones you want to keep in mind. Uh, you personally do not have to have standing as a general rule. You don't have to have personal standing or prove that you have personalized harm in order to bring an action, uh, a petition for quo warranto. That's, that's critical. And general rule is anyone has standing to bring a quo warranto as a general rule. I want to refer you to the Martinez case. Uh, that's 545 Southern 2nd, 1338, Florida, 1989. The Wiley case, W H I L E Y V Scott, 79 7 3rd, 702. That's Florida Supreme Court, 2011. And McNamara, that is 648 Southern 2nd, I uh, believe that's 165, Florida 2nd DCA, 1994. And we'll put that in. Uh, on our site and you'll be able to get those. But those are the main ones that really talk about the elements and uh, what gives you standing, what doesn't, and what types of cases you can bring under quote warranto. Um, also chapter 80, section 80.01 uh, is the Florida statute governing uh, this uh, extraordinary writ. So it, when you bring a challenge, I want you to remember, I want to talk about a couple of exceptions too. Generally, the Florida Attorney General has the power uh, to bring the petitions for the writ of quo warranto. But like I've said, it's not exclusive with the Attorney General. Because you're seeking the enforcement of a public right, if the Attorney General chooses not to do it, an individual can go ahead and do it. Okay. And this is why I say you don't have to show personal harm. You've got to show that you are uh, trying to protect the public and you're exercising uh, this this petition and you're exercising this challenge because you are trying to protect uh, rights belonging to our public. All right. Now, you need to know there is an exception. There's a statutory exception that exists for quo warranto. If you're challenging uh, an election or a right to hold office that arises from that election, and generally the person who makes that type of quo warranto challenge under those circumstances, uh, you either have to be the attorney general, uh, or if the AG is not going to bring a suit, you've got to be a person who is claiming right to that office. Okay, that's important. I'm going to refer you to section 80.01, Florida statutes, and that's going to guide you uh, when that occurs. Four elements to quo warranto. First, you have a Florida official, government agency, or another recipient of a power or right that is derived from the state of Florida. So you can have an officer in a corporation, you can have a private company that you can bring quo warranto uh, against them if they their authority in some respect is being derived from the state. So that, uh, and I think the McNamara case uh, may be an example of that, and there are some others. But that's number one. And then that official or officer uh, has exercised that power or right that is derived from the state government, from our state uh, statutes. But such use of that power is or will be, will be legally improper. It's going to be illegal. And therefore, you're going to tell the court, you're asking them, you should exercise uh, its discretion, because it's discretionary, to grant this discretionary writ. Those are your four basic elements. 
All right. Now, a lot of times you do see court warrant being used as the remedy to test the right of a person to hold office. And again, powers being derived from the state. Now, court warrant is generally regarded as appropriate remedy to determine the title or right to the public office and to oust an incumbent who has unlawfully usurped or intruded into the office or is unlawfully holding it. Okay. Um, in certain cases, quo warranto may be your only remedy, maybe the exclusive remedy in determining the right to hold and exercise a public office. So that's when you're going to want to think about using quo warranto and exercising um, that right uh, to challenge. Now, you can also use quo warranto, as I was saying, to test the claim of a person to employment as well as an office if that employment amounts to some type of liberty or quasi official right. And here's an example State B. Brummer, 426 Southern 2nd, 532, and that's Florida 1982. That in that case, uh, the petitioner used it to oust uh, from office an incumbent who had become personally disqualified to perform the duties of the office because he or she lacks or has lost his or her right to practice a profession or a professional art that has to be practiced in order to fulfill the duties of that office. So that's one example. I think that may have been the public defender involved in that case, but that's one example. Now, keep in mind too that when contesting elections, oftentimes, especially these days, you do have special procedures that are outlined in the, the state constitution or in a statute. And you have that in a lot of jurisdictions. And in and, and some of those situations, uh, depending on the language of the statute, or the type of statute, it could preclude the use of pro warranto, or of course may hold that pro warranto is cumulative. But check both to see what would be right for your particular situation, because uh, sometimes the statutory right will be appropriate, and then sometimes it won't be, and you'll have to use quo warranto. And the rationale, for example, is you have quo warranto uh, and election contest. They don't serve the same function because an election contest is brought by or on behalf of an unsuccessful candidate while quo warranto is brought by or on behalf of the people for the protection of the public. That's a key distinction, and that will help you delineate which is really the right remedy uh, given your particular uh, situation. And you can also have, a, if you think there's a void election, you can use quo warranto to oust people holding office on the basis of a void election. So you'd want to definitely follow uh, the procedures on, uh, on that. Now, in the Supreme Court, um, usually when you're applying uh, for quo warranto with state officers and state agencies, you'll take that up with the Supreme Court because that's where the Florida Supreme Court has the jurisdiction over those types of quo warranto proceedings. The remaining uh, district courts of appeal in Florida and the circuit courts have authority with respect to issuing writs of quote warranto. And so they, they'll do really everything else. So they don't have the same limitation that the Florida Supreme Court does. Right. Now, as a general rule, unless there's a compelling reason for invoking the jurisdiction of a higher court, a quote warranto proceeding should be commenced in the circuit court. So this is a little bit different from a lot of our other extraordinary writs. Uh, so you've got a limited basis for applying for quote warranto in the Supreme Court. Uh, and generally, you're going to want to go to the circuit court to start your petition for quote warranto proceedings. Uh, again, I want to refer you to the Wiley case uh, that's talking about Florida's constitution, authorizing all but the county courts to issue the writs of quo warranto under certain circumstances. And Wiley also says, general rule, you want to go first to the circuit court and file your quo warranto there. 
So let's just talk about a few examples of quote warranto. So it kind of gives you an idea of uh, when, when has it been successfully used. Uh, in the Moody case, and that's, uh, that's an older case, really old, 39, 7, 9, 29, 1905. But just a classic example, you want to test a right or a title to a public office. If you want to test the office holder's qualifications or you want to test the selection process, you can use Quo Warranto. And that's the Bruce V. Keesling, 632 Southern 2nd, 601, Florida, 1994. You also can use it to challenge a holdover after the term of office has expired. And that state ex rel land is v. Thompson, 177, 464, 1936. Um, and Martinez, which we cited earlier, that was used to challenge the governor's authority to call a special legislative session. Again, Quo Warranto. You can also use it uh, to challenge a state agency's power uh, that you think is illegal. And uh, there was a challenge to a corporate agency's power to condemn easements in airspace, for example. That's Irvin v. Jacksonville Expressway Authority, 139 Southern 2nd, 135, Print Law, 1962. The right uh, of a municipality to either exist or to exercise a franchise. You want to test that? You can bring a petition for warrant to, and that's Butterworth. Uh, the SB 523 Southern 2nd 1278, and that's a second DCA 1988. Um, those are those are good examples. And I, I like the Gentry Fetch Company V Gentry. That's 106 Southern 473. Tested the right or title to an office in a private corporation, which is considered a public office, because again, the corporation derived its powers from the state. Uh, so that's an example of applying quo warranto to private situation. You see it in criminal prosecutions. You have a defendant in a criminal prosecution may petition for a writ of quo warranto to challenge the authority of an individual prosecutor assigned by executive order to prosecute the case. Another example of when you can use quo warranto. I think the McNamara is a fascinating case. McNamara v. Kissimmee, River Valley. 648 Southern 2nd, 155, that's Flaw 2nd DCA, 1994. There, there was a challenge to the authority of a riparian owner to fence a portion of a navigable lake and spoil island on the theory that any right to do so must be derived from the state. It's a fascinating case. I, I recommend you, you look into that uh, if you have something that may be similar. Uh, so those are, those are classic examples. Uh, where Quo Warranto has issued um, in, in Florida. Uh, just remember, uh, you still have some of the standard uh, rules that apply. And remember 9.100 uh, that's used for many other extraordinary writs. You want to follow those rules with your petition. Remember, it's not an appeal. You're going to have to file an appendix with key documents that you want considered, uh, usually part of the record, uh, with your petition. And of course, if there's another remedy that applies, then you're not going to really want to use that. Okay. And again, you still, you know, while you don't have any set time requirements like you do have so many writs, uh, time is always of the essence, uh, usually on these type of things, especially with election matters and the right to hold office. So uh, don't forget about Rule 9.100. So there, in a nutshell, about as uh, brief a nutshell as we can do, uh, is... Uh, the basic law, basic, uh, these are the basic rules on quo warranto and when to apply it. Uh, so again, when you have that question, uh, whether it's an election uh, type of case, or you want to challenge uh, somebody uh, in the public office or uh, something in the political process or in private corporation, as long as the action, projected action that you think is illegal, you're talking about power derived from the state, then be thinking in terms of quo warranto. Uh, that's our uh, addition for today on this particular extraordinary writ. By all means, if you have any questions, let us know. And we'll be putting up, uh, I'm sure on this site, uh, possibly on our website, the citations uh, that I think would be good for you to refer to when you have this situation arise in the future. All right. Thank you. And we will see you next time.
Hi, I'm Jennifer Carroll, and I want to thank you for watching our video. You can see more of our videos right here. Uh, or better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel below so you won't miss a single one.